All right. Welcome back, everybody. It's been a, a few weeks, maybe even a month since I've done one of these tutorial videos. And I think it's about time that I answer some of the more common questions and cover some of the trends that I see popping up out in our blooming Mooncat ecosystem. We're now over 5,000 acclimated owners and 6,800 owners overall between both wrappers and the unwrapped Mooncats. Today, I want to cover one of the plainly obvious trends that are beginning to pop up. And it's with some of the, the newer cats within the 2021 collection. And that is uh, the trait rarity and statistical rarity properties, the percentages. What does it mean? Is it important? Do we use Mooncat Pro versus rarity tools? And what are some of the comparisons to some other NFT projects out there comparative to Mooncat's valuation system? So at first, I'm just going to start off. I actually messaged Midnight Lightning, who is one of the devs on Ponderware, for an explanation on what the differences are. And so I'm just going to read what he said to me, and um, then we'll go from there after you have the knowledge straight from the man himself. So trait rarity and statistical rarity are a set of algorithms that community members brought from other NFT communities and aren't specific to Mooncats. So they're not black boxes. It's that they are specific to Mooncats. It's a set of ranking algorithm that sites like Rarity Tools use as a generic way to rank different NFT collections. The way the algorithm work is that for every NFT you find, you first find all the traits that they have and evaluate them as a fraction of how many of the collection they have. For example, an NFT with a trait that only 25 out of 10,000 NFT have in a collection had plus a trait that 2,000 out of the 10,000 had would start at a list of 25 over 10,000 comma 2,000 over 10,000. For trait rarity, that list of trait fractions over ratios is sorted such that the rarest trait is the first. Then all the NFTs in the collection are compared to see who has the best rarest trait. And if there are any ties, the rank by the second most rare trait for each of them. For statistical rarity, the lists of traits are multiplied together. Those values are then sorted and the lowest values are considered the best traits. Sounds like a lot. So if we're understanding this correctly, trait rarity um, is just the combination of who has the rarest trait first. And then if there's a, a and then if there's a tie, then it goes to the second trait. Whereas statistical rarity combines all of the traits together and is multiplied into an algorithm and spits out a number. So statistical rarity would be considered more important or has more metrics to it. I guess it depends on who's evaluating it. And then I got an opinion from Midnight Lightning. So I'm going to cover that as well. Part of why it's not effective as an algorithm is that Mooncats have several traits that are close but not exact. And those algorithms force them to be ranked purely on scarcity and with a large collection that can affect their ranking by a lot, even though the percentage of rarity difference is minute. Also, there's traits included in the calculation that are at odds with the emphasis of the community, has found aesthetic and therefore more valuable. Statistically, spotted mooncats are the most rare of patterns. Only 6,172 of them exist. For trait rarity, ranking therefore puts them as most scarce, therefore most rare. But the community has generally said they prefer the aesthetics of the pure coat pattern the most. The coat pattern is in 6,511 Mooncats, which is the second most common. Only Torties have more with 6,578. For most collections, having only a handful of certain traits, e.g. alien, gold, laser eyes, etc., is enforced by the development team at Mint and by at their scarcity makes them more valuable. Mooncats are the inverse where your years you were asked, do you want to try this again? So the fact that less spotted patterns ones exist means possibly more people in the early years didn't find them as appealing and didn't mint, and therefore they're less desirable to the market. And not that they're more scarce and therefore more rare slash desirable, possibly that's the reason, or just by random chance, the spotted pattern ended up being slightly less than 25% for the collection. So we have a lot to uncover here. Um, Midnight Lightning did a pretty good job at expl explaining it. I'll try to explain it with some, some pictures and some of the websites to help 
you guys understand where we're going. So I think first we should dissect what are the traits? Like what exactly are we fishing for? So classification, Genesis, and the rest of the remaining moon cats, pretty obvious. Rescue year, this is something that obviously wasn't important in the very beginning of moon cats because they were hoping to have all of the minting happening in 2017. And just by luck or by um, virtue of a historical project, it's spread across multiple years. And Mooncats are actually one of the, or is the only NFT project that has mints across five years. So we can see then you have the color distribution, right? Colors are, there's a handful of them, but they're all fairly distributed equally, except for obviously the Genesis cats. Are they inverted? Again, pretty close. As you look, there are all these different expressions, poses, facing, the litter size. They're all pretty close in comparison until you get down to litter size and twins and mirrors and clones, which have a little bit more of a disparity. And uh, I'll cover that in another video. Um, just click above and you can and you can read it. So the Mooncat community combated this in multiple ways because um, obviously at first, as things were rediscovered, Rarity Tools wasn't popular. Mooncat Pro had just been created um, like three days or four days after rediscovery. And I want to mention here that Mooncat Pro is endorsed by Ponderware. It was created by a community member that goes by Dam, who is now actually an official team member of Ponderware. So when you're comparing that to Rarity Tools, just keep that in mind that this is actively worked on by Ponderware themselves. So as with with Mooncats and it being the first generative art project, right? Mooncats, they were um, the first project that were created by an algorithm. So at Mint, when you found them on the moon, they would randomly generate out of over 4 billion possibilities and a cat would show up and then the Minter could decide if they wanted that cat specifically or if they wanted to essentially have a re-roll. And this kind of uh, generative aspect is very common across all different patterns. So down here, you can see there's a trait rarity and a stat rarity. And so trait rarity, I found the first one that is the most rare. This is moon cat number. This is the first 2020 moon cat. Um, there are three of them. So this is the one that you can be considered the most rare, it has the rare stat. And obviously statistical rarity is even rarer down here. So it, I would assume the trait is rescue year because there's only three of them. So that is probably one out. So you have three out of 25,440. Therefore, the rescue year of 2020 is probably favorable in this algorithm as the most important trait that exists. But then when you combine that over stat rarity, which is the 2020 combined with all of these other traits that we have listed above here and that I went over, it falls a little bit downwards. And so then I also found the stat rarity cat, which we could see here is an early rescue. It's a 2018 clone. So 2018, it's a small number. There's only 2,000 out of roughly 2,000 out of 25,440 moon cats. Whereas in the 2017, it's th th a little over 3,000 and goes downwards. Um, it has a very large, tw um, or pretty mid-size litter size. I would assume this is probably a rare one. It has a bunch of twins. It has two clones, which that I think there's only two or three sets of triplet clones. So you're having a triplet clone combined with a 2018, and then the um, DNA is expressed fairly evenly. So I would guess those are probably the combinations, which ends up as the most statistically rare cat in existence. And it is listed on OpenSea. I think somebody actually acquired this pretty easily. And then you go over to Genesis Cats, and they're kind of in a class of their own. So Ponderware has decided to say, you know, they're in a class of their own. Um, obviously, they would be ranked ahead of every other single cat. So that's all you really need to say. And then when you go over to Rarity Tools, they kind of have a pretty similar idea, as you see. Um, this is my cat. This is 2020. So the three 2020 cats are assigned right there in random. Interesting that mine is actually the third rarest, even though um, 
it was minted one number before. It's interesting. There must be something else about it. Um, somebody's actually lowered their their asking price too. It used to be two hundred fifty. So somebody's trying to sell that there. Um, so you could see it's pretty similar. Um, and then if we dive over to statistical rarity, then let's see. Statistical rarity, as you can see, that's the same cat that we covered. And so it looks like Rarity Tools fixed their ranking system because for a while they were favoring um, accessories. And some people were kind of getting wrecked because all the accessories were popping up to the front because they were obviously considered rare because it's a small number. It could be one of one item or one out of 10, which would be favorable over some of these other existing traits where it could be, you know, 5,000 out of 25,000 where you see that even split. So I'm glad they fixed this. Only thing I do want to know is that uh, Rarity Tools does have some numbers wrong. Like first day, um, it's 491, not 587. So I'm not sure um, how many, like if all of their numbers are off or just like that was manually inputted wrong. So just be very careful. I'm not trying to FUD Rarity Tools. I just prefer Mooncat Pro because it's um, endorsed by Ponderware and they're the ones that are actively updating it or making sure that everything is in coordination. So um, I know this is a preferred tool for the new projects, but just keep that in mind um, that you should cross check on both platforms just to ensure that those numbers are statistically right. So here we are with DGen data. DGen data created Mooncats, actually one of the first ones. And I just wanted to show you guys like really how close the distribution is. Oops, didn't need to click that. Um, so you could see down here with the Torties, you could see the pures are a little bit more rare. I'm not sure what um, year this is covering because if you go down here to traits, right? And then we could go down to, to the pattern distribution. See here, it has its pretty close. DGen data, it's off a little bit. I don't know if this is the year. This is why it's always important to cross check off of multiple um, tool and analytic websites to make sure that you are checking the right thing. We are still so early in the space of NFTs that we're all still trying to figure it out. So it's no fault at that. But then you could see down here the coat. See, it has the, the actual coat numbers um, for all of them. That might be uh, just acclimated that now that I think about it, this could just be the acclimated mooncats instead of the, the total, which is um, over here because of the, the different wrappers and everything that's happened. So DGen data, good tool. There's a I have a YouTube video on all the tools and analytics. So I do want to cover a few things. Obviously, like I said, generative art. The Mooncat DNA or the Mooncat ID is its DNA. In fact, all of these numbers have meanings. Inverted colors, facing, pose for pattern, face details. So they all have meanings. This is what we mean when we say generative art is that it wasn't hand-drawn and then put onto a blockchain. It was spitted out algorithmically and then the user could decide what they wanted. So that's why it is an 8 pixelation that was stored on-chain or partially on, partially on chain, depending on um, what your view is of on chain, um, some of the pioneers and limitations. So let's compare the Mooncat ecosystem to two of the larger projects, right? And the reason why is so that you guys kind of understand the difference between trait rarity and statistical rarity to the other big projects. So this is a very common um, rating or rarity system for the um, newer projects and they've, they've uh, mimicked punks because they are iconic. So as you can see down here with the attributes, there are tons and tons of attributes and you can see the price is different and the availability number is much different, right? Like the list goes on and on for all these traits and you can see for the attributes, how it is distributed. You go zero through seven, so obviously this is the rarest one. I think everyone can considers that and it's a pretty um, uniform decision around that. You can see the availability and the numbers, right? So 4,500 three traits and then 3,500 two traits, but then you go down to six traits, it's 11 and four attributes is 
1400. So you could see the distribution is by and large um, heavily dense in one concentrated three attributes, and then it disperses outwards, kind of similar to like what a bell curve is. But with moon cats, it's not because it's very, very similar. So you could also see with, with bored apes, it's very similar as well. Um, this is, so it has the price floor. But if you come and you look at like the clothing, you could see black suits only 42, but then there's some other ones that are in the 300s or 200s. So you could see that percentage and that ratio is six to one or four to one. With moon cats, it's not as um, likely. And you could go down and see with the hats and I guess the mouth, right? Board cigarettes, 700. But then you come down to some of these other ones that's 26. So obviously that's a massive disparity. So the ones with the with 26 are obviously the most rare. And sorry if there's any board ape fans. I'm not too knowledgeable about them. Obviously, I follow it. I like the culture. I think they're definitely the um, cultural relic of the 2021 projects. They're definitely here to stay, probably become something like a supreme of NFTs um, with all the athletes and artists that are that are hopping on that bandwagon. So that is pretty cool. So how did Mooncats combat this? The community, we created what's called Character Cats. So this obviously 332 Garfields out of 25,000. And then you have this like subjective rating system on how, what's the, the best or most closest comparison to a Garfield. Obviously, all of this is sug suggested or um, subjective, I should say. But this was how the Mooncat community in those early days of March, April, May, June of 2021, we decided this is how we're going to find some scarcity and some rarity. And obviously, there are other Mooncat narratives or character cats that pop up. And but this, this is what we are sticking with for now. So just think about it at the end of the day, statistical rarity and trait rarity is becoming an increasingly popular trait among a bunch of the new buyers. And it mostly exists within the 2021 collection because there are literally almost 20,000 cats or, or supply of this collection. So we see some people diving into trait rarity and stat rarity because they are familiar with it because it is the most common rarity system within the 2021 collection. But with the, but with a historical collection like Mooncats that goes across all a span of of minting five different years, you have an underlying foundation that is much different than just a rarity collection trying to find the rarest one. History um, has no ceiling, as you could see with like Van Goghs and all these other historical artifacts that sell for tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. It, once you start getting up into the upper echelon of historical projects or historical rarities within a collection, it becomes subjective to who the buyer is, which is a little bit different from the other ones. So I hope that all of this answered the, your questions with statistical rarity and trait rarity. It's probably something that I think it's a trend that'll continually find more volume as there are an introduction of new community members into Mooncat space. Look out for it. We're 6,800 members strong. The large supply has been a big hindrance for Mooncats, but it'll also be its biggest advantage here in the near future. So looking forward to once we finally cross that 10,000 person barrier and to see where or how prevalent statistical rarity and, stat and trait rarity are within evaluating Mooncats. Um, so this is Cat Dad, and we're tuning out for this episode. I'll catch you next time.